In every corner, there's an Easter egg. So says the director of IT Chapter 2. And of course, the OSA team has found them for you. From hidden cameos to the Shining references, here are some moments that you probably missed in IT Chapter 2. Hi, I'm Paul, and you're watching Awesome Movies. So you remember how in the first chapter, Ben was a shy kiddo and cruelly bullied just because of his weight. We loved how Jeremy Ray Taylor did the part. He was adorable. But he's not the first to play the role. In the previous adaptation of It, it was Brandon Crane who played the part. I'm sure you're sitting there thinking, Paul, why are you telling us this? Well, it's because Crane actually returned to the It universe. But did anyone notice? Here's a hint. In Chapter 2, the first time we meet the extremely handsome and successful grown-up Ben, we also see him leading a video conference with his employees. For a moment, the camera focuses on the employees and shows us the one and only Brandon Crane. It's hard to realize that this is the same person who played Ben as a child in the 90s, but it is rather amusing to see him again. The director of IT, Andy Muschietti, revealed that he wasn't in an easter egg mode when he created Chapter 1. He was too stressed out and just wanted to make a decent movie. But this time he felt much more relaxed, and so we get a lot of hidden bits that I'll gladly continue to share with you. Okay, now let's talk about Eddie's women. In Chapter 2, we see his wife in the beginning of the movie, and later, in one of the most horrifying scenes, his mother. Here's the funny thing, they are both portrayed by the very same actress, Molly Atkinson. It's definitely a reference to King's novel as it visualizes the idea that Eddie marries a woman just like his overprotective mother. Nice move, right? Let's move on to some other exciting cameos. No, I am not going to talk about Stephen King here, especially since it's pretty hard to miss the scene with the grumpy shopkeeper. Although, there are a couple more hidden details linked to the author's appearances in the movie, but we'll talk about that more at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Back to the other cameos. Much like Alfred Hitchcock, we got a chance to see the director in the movie. Missed that? Yeah, me too. As I found out, we can spot Muschietti when he appears as a customer at the pharmacy where Eddie picks up a prescription and gets attacked by a leper. There is also a cameo by Peter Bogdanovich, who is part of the new Hollywood wave of directors. Perhaps you've seen his latest movie, She's Funny That Way. He is the person directing Bill's movie, The Attic Room, so he's basically just playing himself. Moving on to some more references. Fans of King's novels probably remember how serious the author is about the macroverse. For those who don't know a damn thing about that, here's a quick summary. There is a billions of years old supernatural turtle called Maturin that once vomited out, yes, I'm using the correct word, vomited out the universe. He's just as powerful as it. A sort of anti-Pennywise, who mostly stays out of human affairs but sometimes lends some guidance. Eventually, the turtle dies, as we find out from Pennywise in the final battle. In the movie, we only get to see tiny references to the turtle without explanation of what he really does. We see a glance of Maturin at school, when Ben is recalling his days as a kid. A similar reference also takes place in Chapter 1 when Bill picks up a Lego turtle from his little brother's room. Later, Bill accidentally drops and smashes a Lego turtle, which might represent how it comes to corrupt the macroverse. Another reference leads us to King's famous novel, The Shining. When Beverly is fighting to keep the staff door closed during her battle with childhood trauma, we hear Henry Bowers yell, Here's Johnny! This is a callback to Jack Nicholson's famous ad-lib in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, referencing the intro to The Johnny Carson Show. Here's Johnny! And finally, as promised, I will reveal some additional hidden details about Stephen King. Do you remember how Bill wrote a book and everyone kept saying that the ending was kinda shitty? Well, that's not far from Stephen King's actual story. He received many similar comments about his book. Muschietti could just not leave this fact behind, and so he made Stephen King play a role where he gives a sarcastic comment about Bill's failed ending of the book. By the way, that's why in the movie we see a totally different ending than in the novel. 
in the book. Derry blows up, the losers forget about everything once again, they lose their friendship, and of course there's no letter from Stanley. The funny thing is, when the director asked King to do a cameo, the writer answered, well, you have to know I'm a jinx. Every movie I was in bombed. He said it as a joke, but Muschietti promised to try and break the spell. Do you think King was right? Is IT Chapter 2 a success or a failure? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, thanks for staying awesome.